themes in Riders to the Sea. Riders to the Sea is a great little immortal play in which Singe has shown the heroic suffering of a mother who has lost all her six sons in the sea. Her words strike the keynote of the play. She says, I quote, They're all gone now and there isn't anything more to see to do me I will have no call now to be up crying and praying when wind breaks from the south. Unquote. These words express the terrible loneliness, helplessness and sorrow of a mother. She knows only one thing, quiet suffering and acceptance of the mystery of death as an inevitable part of human life. The play is a miniature tragedy. Its theme is the conflict between man and nature. The conflict is presented in terms of human situation which is at once local and universal. It is set in an island off the west coast of Ireland. The play begins with Nora who comes in with a bundle given by the young priest. The bundle contains the clothes of Michael who was reported drowned in the sea. The two sisters resist accepting Michael's death until they see his clothes. They are concerned about their mother who has lost five men to the sea. They hide the bundle. They are virtually shaken by Bartley's decision of going to Kanemara. One of the important themes of the play, C, emerges as a live character. It dominates the play as an indomitable rival to man. The conflict between man and the forces of nature is effectively brought out at the beginning of the play. The stage direction reads, The door which Nora off-closed is blown open by a gust of wind. Man is pitted against the destructive forces of nature. Throughout the play, C emerges as the implacable force of nature. It pervades the lives of all characters. The whole play revolves around fears concerning the sea. The riders to the sea are vanquished by it. The sea, tide, wind occur again and again in the play, reminding everyone about the impending tragedy. Maurya, who has lost five men to the sea, is frightened when Bartley reveals his plan to cross the sea. She has a premonition that he too will be lost to the sea. She tries to dissuade him. She hopes that the young priest will stop him. She struggles desperately to keep him from the sea. The sea turns out to be a formidable rival. The maternal feeling of Maurya begins to manifest itself. Singe writes 
in Iron Islands, I quote, The maternal feeling is so powerful on these islands that it gives a life of torment to the women. Their sons grow up to be banished as soon as they are of age or live here in a continual danger on the sea." Unquote. Bartley is determined to go to Galway Fair to sell the horses. He asks for a bit of rope to make a halter for the horses. Maurya wants him to stay to make a coffin for Michael. She had kept the boards ready. The rope and the board work as emblems of death. They effectively drive home the theme of death. Bartley is bent on going to the fair, but for the mother, the son is more valuable. She asks helplessly, I quote, if it was a hundred or a thousand horses you had itself, what is the price of a thousand horses against a son where there is one son only? Unquote. The conversation between Maurya and Kathleen is very significant. Maurya asks, I quote, isn't it a hard, cruel man won't hear a word from an old woman as she holding him from the sea? Unquote. Her voice is the voice of experience. But Kathleen, who is young, has a different point of view. She contradicts her mother. I quote, it is the life of a young man to be going on the sea." Unquote. Their words reflect on the complexity of life and the people who are trapped in it. Bartley ignores Maurya's words and walks into inevitable fate. Before leaving, he gives instructions to his sisters on their domestic work. It is a custom among the peasants to get the blessings of their mothers while living on an errand. But Bartley does not get his mother's blessings. This strange incident causes worry and part of the two sisters. Soon after Bartley leaves, Kathleen implores Maurya to go down and give him food and her blessings. Maurya leaves and the two sisters take out the bundle. They examine the clothes. Michael's death is confirmed. Michael's shirt now worn by Bartley, forebodes Bartley's impending death. The two sisters are worried about the effect of Michael's death on their sorrowing mother. The pathos of Michael's death brood over the scene. Maurya comes back and announces that she had a terrible vision. She narrates that she saw Michael sitting on the grey pony that followed Bartley's horse. Omen and foreboding form one of the themes of the play. Maurya believes in omens. She has had the vision of her dead son and the premonition of Bartley's death. The red mare, grey pony and the deadly vision 
contribute to the element of mystery in the play. Maurya recalls all the tragic experiences of her life. She alludes to the deaths of her husband and husband's father and six sons. Here the play gains a universal significance. Maurya emerges as everybody's mother. The news of Bartley's death comes to her not as a shock but as something she has already expected. She emerges as a tragic figure with the help of Maurya, Singe provides the play with tragic dignity that elevates it from a seemingly melodramatic presentation.